In the capitalist economy, the main incentive for producing, let's say, a car, is to make profit. A capitalist who owns a car factory hires workers to produce and assemble the different parts of a car. At the end of the day, the capitalist is interested in a higher return than the money he had invested in the beginning. Therefore, he has to sell these cars for a price which covers the investment in machinery, the cost of raw materials, the wages of the workers, and on top of all that, surplus value, which he extracts from the labour power of the workers. But not everyone who needs a car has enough money to buy one. Demand is limited. Our capitalist might be just fine if he were on his own, but there are many other car companies who all compete against each other. Our capitalist, therefore, has to invest in new machinery to outcompete the other producers. In this way, he can gain a temporary advantage and he needs fewer workers and is able to produce more cheaply. But he can still sell his cars at the same or slightly cheaper price than all the other producers. But sooner or later, other industrialists follow suit and also invest in new machinery, because if they don't, they will no longer be competitive. This leads to a reduction in the socially necessary labour time for producing a car, and at the same time, to a fall in the rate of profit. This process of production, investment and competition continues until the point is reached where there is an overproduction of cars which can no longer be sold. The automobile industry is, of course, a key industry because it entails all kinds of things. Beyond the automobile, beyond the production of cars and lorries and ambulances and trucks and bulldozers, it also involves steel, chemicals, plastics, paint, woodwork, you, you name it, all kinds of things are entailed. So, the, so lots of industries are dependent on the automobile sector. But at this moment in time, as I am speaking, the excess capacity, the global excess capacity on a world scale for the automobile industry is approximately 30%. Okay, one third. But what does this mean? Well, it means that Volkswagen, Ford's, General Motors, Fiat, Citroën, you name it, all these companies, that could close one third of all of their factories tomorrow and sack all the workers. And they still would not be able to sell all the cars which they're able to produce at what they consider to be a, a suitable rate of 